Hi friends, welcome to GT Coding. This is the first video in a series of tutorials where we are going to design this complete website from scratch. So this course is divided into five different modules. In the first module, we are going to do some planning and some research to design this website. So we are going to take a look at what are the fonts we are going to use, the colors for our website and we are going to see where we get these images from. And in the second module we are actually going to design the UI of this website and we are going to do it in HTML and CSS and a little bit of JavaScript. We are not going to add any PHP code in the second module. And in the third module, I'm going to give you an introduction to PHP where we are going to look at some of the basic concepts of PHP which we are going to use in this website. And in the fourth module, we are going to set our environment so that we can develop this website locally. We are going to use a tool called Local by Flywheel and we are going to use that to develop this whole website locally. And in the fifth module, we are going to write our PHP code to make this website dynamic. And we are going to create a custom WordPress theme using the design that we had created. And if possible, I will also show you how to host this website on a real server. So that is basically how this course is structured. So if you have any doubts in any of these uh, videos, you can always ask in the comments section and I will try to answer that. So let us now move on to our first module where we are going to do some planning and some research. So first of all let me tell you that we are using a CMS or a content management system called WordPress. But we are not going to use any theme that is available for WordPress online but we are going to create our own theme based on this design that we had created. So the reasons why we are using WordPress is that it is a very popular content management system and there are a lot of features in WordPress which we can use in our website. And the other thing is that WordPress has got a lot of plugins to offer for your website. There are plugins for improving the SEO of your website. There are also plugins for integrating social media icons in your website. There are also plugins for contact forms and email newsletters and there are also plugins uh, that can make your website faster by compressing your images. So a lot of things can be done after creating your website using WordPress. And if you are creating a website for a client who is going to write blogs in it, then you should probably consider WordPress when developing the website because it makes it easier for even a normal person to make use of the UI in WordPress to create and manage posts. So let me show you how a WordPress admin area looks. So I have logged into my account and this is how a WordPress admin area looks. So if you go to the posts section, here we see that we have all the posts that we have written and this is the latest post called react a complete guide if we go to our website and go to the blog section here is the post if we if you want to change the title of this post we can simply go ahead and click on this edit button and we can make the changes over here we can also change the content and we can change the featured image that we had and we can change the summary of this post and so many things are there that we can modify and let me just change this to react js so we'll just update it so this has been updated and if we go back to the blogs page and refresh this we can see that we get react js a complete guide so this is the modified title that we had so this is how easy it is to add or modify posts in WordPress. So once you have created a custom theme for your website, you can make use of the UI in WordPress to add or modify posts. If you go over to pages, 
we can see all the pages that we have in our website if you go over to projects these are all the projects that we have in our website so this is a custom post tab which is not available by default we are going to see how to create a custom post type as well so this is a basic introduction to the wordpress admin area now let's see which are the fonts that we are using in our website these are the three fonts that we are going to be using so they are roboto roboto condensed and roboto slab so we are going to use these fonts from google fonts so if you go over to google fonts here we can type roboto and we get these three fonts we just have to add these fonts and then we are going to use this link over here to use these fonts now the next thing is uh, the colors of our website so overall our website is going to have a light color scheme so most of the areas in our website will be white and then we will have uh, this combination of black and red colors and uh, in the buttons also we have this red and white combination so these are basically the colors that we are going to use and then in our logo we have a pinkish color so we are also going to use that color in our uh, menu bar so the next thing is where should we get our images from so there are a lot of websites which you can use to get images there is pixabay there is unsplash and even pixels which can give you images which are free to use even for commercial purposes the next important thing is how the media queries are set up so that we have a responsive website we are going to have four breakpoints in our website so the first one is at 1200 pixels so if you decrease the size of our window you can see the size in pixels at the top right corner and if you go below 1200 pixels we can see that the whole container has a different width so here we can see the difference over here and uh, the next breakpoint is at 900 pixels so if you go on decreasing the size and if you go less than 900 pixels we can see that the menu bar disappears and we get uh, this icon over here if we click on this we get a uh, mobile navigation so this is another breakpoint which is at 900 pixels so if we go on decreasing the size of our window we have another breakpoint at 720 pixels so if we go decreasing the size we can see that when we reach 720 pixels these sections take the full width of the container and if we look at the footer we can see that the footer also has changed so if we go above 720 pixels we can see that the footer is laid horizontally and if we go less than 720 pixels the footer changes and it becomes vertical and we have a different kind of design for the footer and the last breakpoint is at 600 pixels so if we go decreasing the size of our window and when we reach 600 pixels or below we can see that the container takes full width of our window so if we go above 600 pixels we have a little gap over here and if we go less than 600 pixels we can see that the container takes the full width of our uh, browser window and even the footer takes the full width of the browser window so these are all the breakpoints that we have in our website and the last thing that i want to address is that we are using font awesome icons so these are all font awesome icons even this is a font awesome icon so we need to import font awesome in our website as well so this is basically a brief introduction to this website and this concludes the first module of this series where we have taken a close look at this website and we have done the planning and the research now the next thing is to start designing this website so in the next couple of videos we are going to 
design this website and we are going to create all the different pages to get everything ready for creating the custom WordPress theme. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, please click on the like button. Subscribe to this channel to get the latest updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.